Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. People are still joining, so I'll give them a moment. Is Rebecca joining? Mm, I don't see Rebecca yet. Okay. Okay, Yasmin, I'm handing it over to you. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on on the participants who are coming in, um, so you can let them in. Okay. Uh, okay, let's get started. Um, would somebody uh, summarize what happened yesterday um, after hours and pre-market was going on? It looks like some businesses, they um, posted their earnings. You can share your screen if you like. Uh, So Netflix in particular, mm -hmm. um, they posted their earnings. They were up, uh, I think maybe 30 something percent while the market was down 15%. Uh, but they're not sure they can keep up with the orders, even though the president or some one of the executives said um, they are not gonna run out of content but they're still not sure they're gonna keep up with all, well, well, their growth is gonna be the same in the next quarter. So that set their stock down. Yesterday was trading at like 450 something. I think they're at 420 something today. Um, and then Snap, if you don't mind, can we look at that company so we get an idea of what's really going on? Because I just looked at their stock. It's, it's relatively cheap, like $15, which is not bad. Um, but when I look on Open Insider, I see that a lot of executives are selling. So I don't understand if they're just doing it to, to, so that there's more stock in the pool. I don't know. But anyway. Um, Why don't you go ahead and check? 
all of them that weren't in seven figures. Okay. I also looked to see if there was any that were um, names that I knew <clears throat> and they weren't. I looked at the uh, bottom stocks as well and still the same thing. We've seen works before. We looked them up, mm -hmm. but nothing really going on. So I looked at Snap so far because I had been hearing it overnight. And I didn't realize this snap was actually um, Snapchat. Right. Like that. So I'm going to go and look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, did I stop sharing it? Yes, you did. Um, what happened to the markets overnight? Oh, the um, this thing is so low on my screen that I can't can't go on. Okay, now it disappeared. The markets overnight. Um, this is after hours. The market um is up overnight. Um, Chipotle is a name I recognize. Twitter is a name I recognize. Under Armour, um, they were at eight dollars yesterday. Um, so they're also going up. Um, the Canadian dollar, all these dollars went up, but they're still, I still don't think they equal uh, the American dollar, right? Of course, you know. Uh, uh, crude oil went up, it was 11 mm -hmm. something yesterday. And mm -hmm. the world markets, um, New Japan is down, everybody else went up. So it's mixed. It's mixed, okay. Um, okay. Good job. You could be a, a business section reporter now. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I, awesome. went to, I went on to FinViz and I wanted to find out um, what, what, were, what, which categories we're already looking at. So in addition to the employees, see how I have this sort out? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a more visual person, so I can't just have the X's. I wanted to see like, and be able to compare on a day-to-day -day basis um, so we look, we look at employee, the okay. market cap, average mm -hmm. volume, volume, SH, SH, short, yeah, yeah, short, um, and the Load. float. What does the, what is the SHS out? Short. It says short for short. What does it mean though? Uh, shorting basically means uh, betting against the company, uh, betting that uh, the price will go down. The price of the stock will go down. Okay, and then we so have so more, more people short a stock. Uh, you know, you understand that the market sentiment is that people. Oh no, that wasn't it. That's SH SHS outstanding. Oh, outstanding. Is shares outstanding? That's shares outstanding. Okay. And yeah. Float. Yeah, and shares are float. So outstanding and floating shares. Floating shares are the shares that are actively being traded. Um, Floating out, is outstanding shares are the total number of shares um, that are that the company has issued. The to outstanding is total number number of shares. Company outstanding, and the float is what the, the ones that are actively being traded. You know, available in the market or you know. Okay, so the float means betting against the company and the price. Yeah, short, the short float, yeah. So okay. SH, yeah, so in this case, SHS would be shares, not short. Uh, but in, in some other places, I've seen that uh, short is, is also, uh, you know, shortened as SHS. So looking at this one, they have uh, <coughs> um, almost 3,200 employees here. Mm -hmm. um, the shares outstanding is one4 for 48 billion, billion then um, 835 million uh, is what's being traded. 
Um, you said you look for this number to be, <coughs> I thought you said less, I forgot the number you said. I have it in my notes, but you look for this number to be less than, it wasn't 50%. So what do you look for that number to be? Um, usually if it's, a, if it's around 1%, um, that's a healthy sign. Um, but this if it is, if it is more than 1%, then you start to, then you have to look at other factors. What's making it, um, you know, uh, what's making people bet that they are, that the price will go down. So this happens quite a lot with, uh, with volatile, um, stocks. Uh, so, for example, Tesla would be one of the major uh, stocks in this category um, where, you know, where the price continues uh, upward and downward swings very frequently. Uh, but shares, but companies like Tesla are also uh, companies where, um, where there is a history of recovery. So Snapchat is also, you know, uh, one of those companies. So, so even though these are not small caps, these are quite large uh, cap companies. Um, there is still volatility, uh, you know. So Snapchat is what eighteen billion dollars worth of uh, 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 eighteen billion dollar worth company. So, so it's not a small company, uh, but still the price volatility is visible through, uh, through that short float uh, percentage. So you're so saying these numbers are usually high, usually more than 1%, no matter what is going on in the market? Not for every company though. Yeah, just certain companies. Yeah, so certain we're companies. always gonna yeah. see them relatively high. Right, um, so, so when I see this, first of all, I, I don't invest in these companies, but if I do, I, I invest a small amount of money Okay. And, and I keep a constant eye on it, um, you know, of what's going on whenever there's a time, uh, whenever you see there's trouble, you, you get out of it. Um, you know, you don't stay in this for too long. Um, okay. Okay. So then, so then that's pretty much the numbers that you look at, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so now I looked here on Insider and I yeah. see that just on yeah, the 20th. Everybody's selling on 420. Uh, yeah, yesterday, 420. Day before yesterday. And they're wow. selling a lot, but um, their stock has gone up since then. Does this mean sometimes that, does it necessarily mean that they uh, know something that we don't know that something bad is coming or could it be that they just want more shares in the pool? Um, so people sell stocks for a number of reasons, you know, especially the insiders, they might want to cash out their, uh, stocks. They may be aware that a lawsuit is coming or some type of issue is happening. Um, so all we can do is speculate, uh, you know, of why, uh, this sale must be happening. So, um, you know, that number worries me, you know, that so many people sold their stock from who are insiders day before yesterday, right? On 420, April 20th. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, five, five uh, yeah. Five top people sold their stock in just one day. And that's, quite a lot, you know, 3%, 1%, 3%. So, so they're holding, uh, they, they're selling. Um, it's uh, it's negative 3%. That means they sold one and 3%. Right, right. So okay. they are selling a significant portion of their holdings. Uh, and not just I'm April 20th, April 3rd, March 18th. No, everything here is a sale. Nothing here is a purchase. Right. You're right. Why is some of them? Wow. Oh, some of them is. Oh, and I noticed that they trade after market too. So I was like, why is this number going up and down? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
So that's where, uh, let's look at Finviz. Uh, what's going on at Finviz with this company? Is there some other news? Yeah, the news is just the same thing as far as um, Dow Jones futures signal coronavirus stock market isn't going up. Um, coronavirus helps Netflix and Snap gain subscribers. Snap stock urges 20%. Mm -hmm. Netflix data snap blah 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 five mm -hmm. things you must know immediately for Wednesday I mean must know for Wednesday I didn't get a chance to look at that so I wanted to look at that okay um, stock futures rise but turmoil reigns in oil uh, Netflix adds nearly 1.6 snap uses jump 20% during pandemic um, so I guess this is based probably based on the earnings they put out that's why this came out right right Okay, so Snap, get report, the parent of Snapchat jumped 20% um, in market trading Wednesday to 14.99 after revenue four, of 4.46, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. so what this tells me is, what this tells me is that, that market, market dynamics are so uh, forceful at this time that they don't care that insiders are selling. They are expecting that insiders are selling because they want to cash out equity um, and and that's it you know they're not reading too much into um, into why they're sharing it so so there's a possibility that there is no lawsuit going on there's nothing wrong going on with the company it's just that the company wants to um, uh, to uh, the, the insiders want to make some money and uh, diversify their portfolio they might be buying other stocks you know selling this and buying others so so that may be it uh but because they had a very strong earning uh because they uh they're still adding uh customers uh you know i guess people have nothing to do in their homes and uh and they're using snapchats because there's no record of any conversation you know after it has happened uh they are they are valuing that service uh, and that's why they're still buying it. So, okay, awesome. This was really good. So going forward, um, you know, every class I would like uh, one person to volunteer and give this description. Um, I was particularly happy the way you uh, did it. I mean, it was, it was very professional, you know. So what I do in the morning, just so everybody else knows, I have, um, I don't know if you'll find this helpful or not, but I, I bookmarked, um, I bookmarked my stocks. I mean, the, all the pages that um, Dr. Navid said to look at. So what I do in the morning is I open up my notes, I open up my top gain in stocks, the way I organize it. I open up my Charles Schwab, but I also open up five tabs, five, yeah, five tabs. And then it's in my, it's already in my stocks folder. So I open up every single one of these. And then I go to my email and look at that before the bell. And then I come and look at these things. And then on my other screen, I literally have two other screens. Um, I have another desktop and I have two other screens that I'm looking at right now. Um, I know everybody doesn't have that luxury, but I couldn't follow the class on one uh, screen with Dr. Navid. I needed more. And so on this side, I have, um, I open five different, five or six different Robin Hood screens and I minimize them. And I'm just watching the stocks that I wanna see for the day. So the stocks that I wanna see for the day um, is Snap. I wanna see, and I'm, like I said, I minimize them. Um, if you can see it <laughs> here. Um, so Zoom, um, Crude Oil, Facebook, Snap, and Netflix. I'm just constantly switching what I want to see for the day and how it's performing. Okay. That's helpful. Awesome. So, um, is Rebecca or D online? Rebecca, D. Mm. Okay. Okay, so if somebody else notices, if, the, if Rebecca or D or L, if any one of them is online, please let me know uh, if they come in later on. Um, so like I said, I would like every class to begin with uh, somebody else doing the presentation of, of what happened. 
uh, you know, my hope is that uh, that even if you do not fully understand everything, uh, you will start to understand this once you explain it. And at the very least, when you see news and people are talking about the stock market or people talking about the stocks, you would have no difficulty in understanding exactly what they're talking about. You know, it would not be a foreign language to you. Um, so, so please uh, either volunteer. If you don't volunteer, I may volunteer somebody. So just be prepared that your number may come in in any one of the uh, next few classes. Okay. Oh, Al is here. Okay. Al. Uh, oh, Al Corbett. Okay. Good. Um, Al is uh, uh, is your dad here? Oh, Mike is not here. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So um, the reason I okay. Oh, this is Al. So the reason I asked uh, uh, for Al, you know, I received a very nice email yesterday. Thank you for that. Uh, and there was a question about the UCO uh, situation. So um, I know it's confusing when there's a reverse split. Um, they are becoming common, but the intent behind any split or reverse split is that it should not have any impact on your equity. Equity is the amount of money that you have invested or, or that you have after growth or or decline, whatever amount of money that you have invested in that company, that there should not, there should be no impact on your equity just because of the split or reverse split. Um, and that's what you'll see in any article that you pull uh, for that specific company. Uh, the, if you see uh, a decline or gain after a split or reverse split, that's the market dynamics of what happened afterward during the market hours. So UCO uh, really tanked yesterday. Uh, now there are two reasons. One is that that, that reverse split uh, showed a weakness anyway uh, in the company that they are not able to maintain a nice uh, high price, you know, and that's why they had to do a reverse split. They were, they were tatering at a $1 range and they did not want to be a penny stock, basically. A penny stock is, you know, the stocks that trade below $1. Um, and as I told you, it may also be a requirement for a number of stock exchanges to maintain a certain uh, uh, value for each stock. If a company fails to maintain that stock, stock exchanges and uh, uh, major indices, they kick uh, companies out of their indices or their stock exchanges. Um, one example is uh, Dow Jones Index. Dow Jones is very selective. Only 30 companies at any given time can be on that uh, uh, index. So, so you have to maintain all of the all of the requirements that go along uh, with being on Dow Jones Index. And one of those requirements is that you should maintain a value above $1. Now, given that UCO is not part of um, Dow Jones index, uh, you know, they may be part of other indices uh, where they may have a recovery. So that's why that may lead to a situation where they do a reverse split. And UCO in, in particular did a one to 25 uh, split, uh, reverse split. So 25 stocks become a single stock, uh, but the value, should not change because of uh, because of um, uh, the reverse split. It was just bad timing on their part because you know just the day before. So they had already announced earlier in the month that on on April twenty first they are going to do this reverse split. So they had already announced it was already pre planned. What they did not know was that the day before on the twentieth. Uh, oil markets are going to crash and oil is going to go negative for the first time in history. You know, they did not anticipate that, I guess. Um, and that put an additional pressure. Now, given the situation of what's happening in the market right now, it looks like the market 
is probably going to do quite well today. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, okay, so you see this uh, Dow is um, uh, after hours Dow is up 345 points, NASDAQ up 116, S&P 42 points up. Yesterday, everybody was down, you know, significantly. And that was oil bringing everything down. Uh, other news was was pretty good, but uh, but primarily uh, the oil news was bad, which brought the markets down. Um, today, you can see aftermarket, uh, uh, all, all aftermarket indices were up. So that had an impact on the world market. It is mixed. Um, you know, Nikkei uh, 225 is down a little bit, but everybody else is up. Uh, commodities, light crude is up um, uh, to 13.75 right now. So people are expecting that there would be uh, growth. Yesterday, I talked about one other source that I have recently started to track, and that source is um, cryptocurrencies. And in, in cryptocurrencies specifically, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day. You know, it does not stop. It trades on the weekends. It, you know, so you can buy and sell uh, Bitcoins any time of the day. And you can see the Bitcoin is going up as well, right? So I have noticed that Bitcoin has become a very good predictor of what is about to happen in the market a few hours before it happens in the market. So of course it can't talk about, you know, uh, individual companies, but it overall market sentiment, um, it, it is a very good indicator. So if you look at one week uh, chart, you see this is what was happening on April 20th. Yesterday, it remained, um, you know, more or less uh, consistent all day yesterday. Uh, and that was because there was only one bad sector that was bringing the economy down, but there was nothing else going on that would have indicated. So, so as I saw this yesterday, I was expecting that today would either be stable or it would be an upward swing. And that is what happened, uh, you know, starting at, uh, uh, okay, so this is not the correct time zone. So, so this is about an hour ago. Uh, it started to go up. So seven, above 7,000 is a very respectful number that shows me $7,000 per Bitcoin. That shows me that market is quite stable and on, on the upward trajectory. Um, <clears throat> but again, you know, this is just one piece of information. You can't rely on one piece of information to make your decisions. Um, uh, yesterday, Asaki and I, we were talking about how everybody is an expert after the fact, you know, once, you know, today I can sit here and I can tell you, oh, it was oil that was bringing the market down. Uh, and, and that would be the talk that you, you'll hear from, uh, from any uh, business analyst. Uh, you know, I have not found anyone so far who would have a perfect prediction of what is going to happen today or tomorrow or next week. Uh, nobody, nobody dares um, make those predictions. And if somebody does, most of the time they are wrong. So, so this is where we stand. Now, um, a little bit more about Bitcoin. Well, market has opened. It's 9.30 already. So let's see. Let's see what's going on on the market right now. So, okay, this data is still not updated. It's 9.30 right now. So, so we'll, give it a, we'll give it a moment and see what happens to this uh, in a moment. So in the meanwhile, I wanna talk to you a little bit more about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, as you know, is a cryptocurrency. The way it works um, is, is unprecedented. Uh, there is no central bank that would that would tabulate and control this currency. So what that means is basically everybody has 
uh, a ledger and has the knowledge of who owns how much of Bitcoin. So when you create a wallet, a Bitcoin wallet on your phone, you basically can see um, everybody who, um, oh, thank you, Al. <laughs> um, uh, so you can, you can basically see everybody else's ownership you can see how much how many bitcoins are owned by by everybody else now you're not going to see names you know it's not going to say navid owns this much bitcoin but it would have an account number so against each account number um you would know how much everybody owns and bitcoins are um are limited in quantity um, I think that there, there's a maximum of 21 million bitcoins uh, uh, that can be produced, uh, you know, by Bitcoin systems. So, and they're not all there. So almost 18 million bitcoins are already in the market. And there are only three more million bitcoins that can be produced. Now, how they're produced, you know, that's all magic, you know, you know how all of that happens. Um, uh, that's a lot of detail for another class, you know, um, uh, but the way they are produced, the systems are called bit mine, Bitcoin mines. So you, you mine for Bitcoins. So basically what that is, is a, is a large computer systems that people set up. They try to solve problems uh, and the problems come in. So for example, in a traditional banking system, if you wrote a check, uh, you know, let's say you have hundred dollars in your account and you wrote two checks for hundred dollars each and you gave it to somebody. Now the, out of those two people, whoever goes to the bank first to cash their check will get the hundred dollars. The next person will get denied. Now, because there is no central body to control what happens or what sequence the Bitcoin transactions come into play, potentially a person can say that, okay, I'm giving $100 to this person and $100 to that person while this person only has $100. Now, how do we know who, which transaction came first? That's where, the, that's where the complexity of the system comes into play that first of all, everybody has a copy of the ledger. So everybody knows who owns how much. And every time there's a transaction, a copy of that transaction is sent to everybody else. So the, the uh, chances of hacking that system are very low because you've got so many copies. There's no chance. So, so let's say if there's one person out of 42 million who has a different uh, transaction set, uh, that different, different transaction set will be ignored. Uh, people who have, you know, more people who have similar transaction set, they will be accepted as valid transaction set. Um, so, um, so from that perspective, it creates a complexity in the system where the system determines whose check will be, will be, ordered first, which of those two checks is going to be honored and which check is going to be denied. That creates what's called a hash uh, problem. So to solve a hash problem, you need a lot of computing power. And the way computing power is provided in this system, it is decentralized. So think of it like a credit card system. In a credit card system, every time you swipe your card, the transaction information goes to a central entity like Visa or MasterCard or Discover, whichever you know, credit card you're using. And they make a determination whether the transaction is gonna go forward or not. In the case of cryptocurrencies, uh, that job is done by Bitcoin farms. So they're basically data centers they compute 
and they look at everybody else's accounts. So all the, the whole ledger is being looked at every single moment. So it, it asks for a huge amount of um, computing power. Now, there's no central entity. Bitcoin is not a central company. It does not have a central company. So, uh, so what happens is individuals can set up Bitcoin farms in their homes and in their basements and in warehouses. And, you know, uh, there are some commercial uh, Bitcoin farms that would have um, hundreds of thousands of these machines sitting and, and, and computing all these transactions, providing the computing power. But individuals can also set up these farms in their homes. So when you do those transactions, you get paid in Bitcoins. Uh, so that's how you make money. So, so the way uh, people get paid, uh, you know, in Bitcoins, if the price of Bitcoin is high, you know, like $10,000, they, they get quite a significant, uh, you know, payback. But if they are, if they don't have enough money, uh, you know, if the Bitcoin is trading low, then they don't make enough money. The biggest cost in setting up a Bitcoin farm or a cryptocurrency farm is electricity because you know uh, electricity consumption is huge. Um, I mean, in, I've, I've uh, looked at a number of farms. So if they make hundred dollars in bitcoins by providing that computing power, they end up spending sixty to seventy dollars just in electricity. So, so those are uh, issues. But this is something you know, for, for youngsters, uh, I would like you to keep an eye out because the world is changing. And, and I cannot see the world behaving the same way, acting the same way uh, uh, for too long. Uh, you know, you can see that just the last two months, uh, how the world has changed. So I expect that, that this cryptocurrency thing uh, May, we may be in for a for a very long ride with these, um, you know, the, the technology. They, they uh, answer all the all the questions that uh, people have about the security and all that. You know, the the technology, the underlying technology answers those questions. Um, and my expectation is that so the, there's another word called blockchain. You may have heard of uh, the word blockchain in terms of Bitcoin. You know that technology is not just being used for cryptocurrencies. That technology is being used for a lot of other things as well, uh, like in healthcare, the record management systems and uh, disaster so, management systems and things like that. Yes. So when you put money into Bitcoin, like, um, so basically you put real money in it, and you get the cryptocurrencies like yes. in exchange. Yes. Yes. So. So for example, right here, this is Robinhood, right? So if you have an account with Robinhood already, you can go, you can say, I want to buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. So how many Bitcoins I'm going to get? I'm going to get 0 0.0141 Bitcoins for $100 at a price of $7,080. Okay. I can put a limit order that I want to buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoins when the price drops down to $6,500 uh, $6, uh, per Bitcoin. Okay, so I can put a, uh, you know, that, that order. Uh, and like I told you, I started uh, looking into this very recently. Um, so I started, when I started, I started with like buying hundred dollars worth of it. And I, uh, yeah, this is another kind of, so hundred dollars, then $500, $500, right? So then I started to buy more quantity and then, then I started to sell higher quantities. So I sold almost $1,000 worth of it. I sold another $1,000 worth of it, another $500, right? So you see all this history. So now I'm buying and selling, you know, in a couple of thousand dollars. Every time I make this uh, purchase or sale, 
I'm making, you know, 20, 25, $50 in the matter of few minutes. Uh, but more importantly, what it taught me is that, that I wanted to do something with Bitcoin farming. So I ordered a $3,000 machine the other day. Uh, when the machine comes in, I will set it up and maybe we can have another class at a later time when I have set it up all and I can share with you how that is set up. But, uh, you know, as especially the, the students, high school students and college students, as you do your degrees, there, you know, if you are offered a course on cryptocurrencies, you know, if I were you, I would go and take that course. You know, I never took that course. Uh, because there was no cryptocurrency when I was going to college. Uh, so I have to learn all this by myself. But you may have an opportunity uh, if something like that is offered in a classroom. But if, even if it is not offered in the classroom, you've got plenty of resources um, and, and I can give you a little push in understanding how that, mar how digital market is actually going to work uh, going forward. So, so if this is not it, it is at least uh, the, the, the hallmark of where we are headed in the future in terms of trading. So uh, my question is, um, so I hear a lot about Bitcoin like used on a black market, right? Mm -hmm. So, but how do you know your money's safe when you put it in there? Oh, so, so there would be an app on the phone. It's called a Bitcoin wallet. So, for you to receive money that I'm sending or for you to send money to somebody else who is selling you something, let's say you want to buy a lawnmower uh, from Home Depot. If Home Depot accepts Bitcoins, you would have that app set up on your phone where you can, where you can pay the other company of that prevailing exchange rate between dollar and Bitcoin. Do you know if PayPal accepts um, Bitcoin? Oh, good question. Let's find out. What was the name she said? PayPal. PayPal now allows its merchants to accept Bitcoins. Okay. So PayPal, Venmo, digital currencies. So they're using multiple uh, uh, digital currencies. So Bitcoin is one of them. So uh, last Bitcoin will be, uh, so I told you there are three, 3 million Bitcoins that are still to be generated. So last Bitcoin will be generated in 2040. After that, no more new Bitcoins can be produced. So that's where the scarce, scarcity part comes in. When, some, when a resource is scarce, its value goes up because there's no supply. And if there's more demand, the value of Bitcoin can continue to go up. We saw that last year, that Bitcoin, which is trading at $7,000 today, went up to almost $21,000. Uh, now people are expecting that one Bitcoin will, will go up to as much as $50,000 or $60,000 in the next few years because of the scarcity uh, aspect of it. So, you know, and you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. You can just have a portion of a Bitcoin. So, uh, so is this a good, uh, I guess, a good thing to invest in in the long term? <laughs> well, again, so this is, this is where the, the, the um, uh, caution part comes into play. With stocks, a stock is a security, is a financial security. There is financial backing. There, is, there are legal systems in place uh, or, on how stocks trade, how paper, how actual money trades. You know, there are systems in place. There are laws in place. There are no laws with Bitcoin. There are no laws for cryptocurrencies. So if the value plunges, you can't sue anybody you cannot expect somebody to come in and give you a handout. So, so you are on your own. Uh, there's no legislation um, you know, that would give you any rights. Uh, so it's, it's just a matter of trusting the system. So if you have a high level of trust in the, in, in the system, 
um, you know, you can invest at, at your own peril. But there's no FDIC, there's no security, um, it's not cash. So, so, so those are all the negative things <clears throat> that are associated with it. And then all, all types of cryptocurrencies are not valid currencies, uh, you know, they, they don't do as well either. So two main uh, cryptocurrencies, one is of course the Bitcoin, and then there's the other one called Ether. Um, uh, or Ethereum, you know, the longer version of it. So um, where is it? Let's, uh, let's look at it. <clears throat> um, so these are all the cryptocurrencies that are available on Robinhood.com. So Ethereum, like I told you, this is one of the uh, major ones. And of course, Bitcoin. But there are other ones, you know, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Ripple. Um, people, okay, so <laughs> it'll become a lot more complicated if I keep going in this. Bottom line is people can create their own cryptocurrencies as well. So you can create your own cryptocurrencies. It's just a matter of how many people actually use it. If a lot of people start using it, then it becomes something real. If nobody uses it, then you have your own Bitcoin that nobody else trades. So, so from that perspective, Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, these are two major ones, uh, but then there are other ones, you know, and then there are, you know, for example, you see here, Bitcoin Cash, and there's another one, Bitcoin SV. So these are also sh offshoots of that Bitcoin. Uh, so those types of uh, things keep coming. So. I, I stick with uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin for now, uh, but it, there's, a, there's a good chance that other cryptocurrencies may also um, uh, see a surge in how they do. So if I'm trying to compare like a Bitcoin to something, like an analogy type thing, so you know how there's Kohl's cash and like Kohl's only accepts that, like that's their form of money. So is that like what the cryptocurrencies are like? If I try and use Kohl's Cash somewhere else, they might not accept it. But if another place, like, <laughs> hold up. Yeah, if somebody else says that, okay, we'll accept Kohl's Cash. Yeah. You know, if Home Depot says that, okay, bring your Kohl's Cash with us and we'll, we'll accept it. So, so if a lot of companies start to accept that, then it starts to have more legitimacy. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, so right now, Kohl's Cash is like, you know, funny money that you can use it at just one store and that's it. But if others start to accept it, then it starts to become mainstream. Then it Why would others start to accept it? Issues. Like what would, what would make um, some, another company start to accept something as like valid? Um, well, um, a lot of, uh, so Bitcoin and, you know, these early cryptocurrencies, um, when star power comes into play, you know, that's when it starts to become serious. So Bitcoin, uh, you know, either by luck or because, because um, a lot of uh, serious investors and individuals, they started to look, look into these, these two companies. Um, they started to become more popular. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just like anything else in the market, you know, why does one brand of um, hand sanitizer is more valued than the others? You know, uh, look at it from, from the makeup industry, you know, pick one thing. I'm sure, you know, eyeliner. There are hundreds of companies that make eyeliner, but there are certain companies, their eyeliners are more valued than the other companies. Why, well, how does that happen? So there's a lot of marketing aspect to it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, luck involved, I guess. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. So there, there's no single answer uh, for what, what makes or breaks a cryptocurrency. Um, excuse me, can you like um, go through um, what, um, like when you're on Ro um, Robinhood and you're looking at Bitcoin, you like insert an amount, which is amount in US dollars. 
what exactly is the estimated price and the estimated uh, BTC? Like, what does that mean? Uh, okay, I let me bring that up and let's see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So you see the okay. Yeah. So uh, so Robinhood normally, you know, if you look at any other stock, uh, let's see. Uh, let's look at uh, Oxy, for example, right? This is Occidental uh, Petroleum. For this stock, you see the, the stock value is 13, uh, uh, price is 13.06 right now. And when I start to put, you know, I want to buy, let's say 100 of this, this market price corresponds exactly with what is the market value right now, right? You see that? Mm hmm but when it comes to uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, that is not quite the same. So, estimated price, they're saying that by the time I hit this button, I hit the submit order button, and it and the time that it actually gets executed, they are expecting that the value may go up by a few dollars. So. So you see it says 73, here it says 77. So they're yeah. adding, what, almost $4 and some change to this value. Similarly, if you sell it, they're going to reduce this number. So they're going to they're gonna estimate a few dollars less uh, per Bitcoin. So, uh, so this is to, to account for the delay between you hitting the submit button or placing an order and the order actually being executed. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's why they cannot tell you that exact price that what you see right now on the screen is not going to be uh, what you are going to get when the order actually hits the system. Got it. Okay. 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 So, uh, a few other stocks, uh, a few other industries. Yesterday we talked about travel industry. We talked about uh, uh, entertainment industry and, um, uh, and, 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 and oil, energy sector. Um, if you are looking at technology sector, some of the companies that you might want to look at could be, uh, you know, Intel Corporation, uh, could be AMD. AMD is uh, advanced micro devices. Those are the two main competitors that make the, the, the CPU or the central processing unit for the computers. Um, those are two companies that are um, valued. Um, uh, 3M. Uh, 3M is um, uh, quite an innovative company. Um, you might want to look at uh, GE, you know, these are all companies that are constantly innovating. Right now, as, I, as we talked about yesterday, uh, given the stimulus package, um, given that the money has already been doled out in, you know, large chunks, it is, it is expected to continue keeping the markets afloat for a little while longer. So, so it would be, it would be wise to, you know, to invest money, but at the same time, constantly keeping an eye out uh, because, uh, because this is all on, on propped up footing. Right. So you saw what happened with $349 billion that were, that was slated for, uh, for, small businesses out of that 346 billion dollars were given out to only 46 companies and they were not small companies by any stretch of imagination you know for which the money was intended for so for example can you say that again okay so in the stimulus package out of that 2 trillion dollars 349 billion dollars were allocated for small business for small business to support them for their payroll and their uh, COVID-19 related expenses or loss of business. So there was a program called PPP, Paycheck Protection Program, 
So if you are a small business and small business that define as a business with less than 500 employees and you have no more business coming in, right? So what are you left with? Either you have to let go your employees or if you keep your payroll, the government from the stimulus package would give you up to $10 million to continue operating, but you have to fulfill certain criteria. You have to be a small business. You can't be more than 500 employees and you can only use that money for payroll purposes, at least 75% of it. So these huge chain stores, so for example, um, root steaks or shake and sh what is shake and shack or right. So, so those com yeah. com companies like those, shake shack? yeah, shake shack. So companies like those, they tricked the system in a way that they treated every single location as a small business. And all of those come 46 companies took away $346 billion, only 46 companies. So they are not small businesses. They had huge amount of cash available to them and everybody got $10 million, um, uh, you know. So actual yeah. small businesses, they didn't get any money. Now, when you say they tricked the system, don't you think too that the same way we know the name Shake Shack, that the government knew that Shake Shack wasn't an actual small business? You know what I mean? Like the people who process in the forums, like wouldn't, don't they know that Shake Shack is actually a, a friend? You know what I mean? Like right, a bigger right. company. Right. So somebody should have, so, so the thing is, uh, the, they fulfilled, they met the rules, the rules that were set up, they met those rules. The problem is who is setting the rules. So if Trump is setting the rules, who do you think is going to benefit? Right. So, so that's the, so the money ran out in less than two weeks. So last week they had on their website, there was this huge banner on SBA, the Small Business Administration, which administers these loans that we have already run out of money. So then now they're talking about more money uh, for actually helping the small businesses. And, you know, the likelihood of that is, is almost non-existent. Uh, most probably the money will still go to large corporations. So now Shake, Shake Shack yesterday or day before yesterday, they did announce that they're going to return that $10 million. But that's just one company out of 46 companies that had already gobbled up that money. So I don't expect that that money is going to come back uh, to actual small businesses. So, so it is going to you know, continue to uh, cause problems for small companies, for small businesses. But if you look at it from the macro perspective, they will still continue to keep the market afloat because, because these large companies will continue to benefit from it. And that's why it leads to all of these conspiracy theories uh, that it's a hoax, you know, large companies, they wanted to gobble up these $2 trillion and they are successful and, you know, all that uh, nonsense that goes along with that, uh, uh, you know, related to COVID-19. Um, but the fact is uh, that $2 trillion is in the market now. So the market will probably still continue to stay afloat for a little bit longer um, for several other, several more months and years. So, uh, so you just need to be wise, keep an eye out, uh, um, you know, be ready to pull, pull your money from your stocks. Um, when they are, when they have hit bracket highs, you know, because everything that goes up must come down. Um, so all I can say is don't be greedy. <laughs> so you, once you have hit your targets, uh, you know, take your, at least take your profits out at that time. And, you know, see U S stocks rebound. Um, Dow rallies after two days of losses. You said take our money out when? So, okay. So when you start to make, so let's say you invest uh, $100 in a stock and the stock goes up, your money becomes, you know, $150. At least take the $50 out of that stock. Put it in a short-term security 
where even if the market collapses, you don't lose at least the profits. Or take the actual money, or take the $100 out of that company and leave the profits in that company. So, so, so be conscious of the fact that, that this is all false bottom, um, you know, uh, and this is being propped up because of the, because of the Congress uh, putting in $2 trillion. You know, you can't continue to do that for, for very long. How do you leave the fifty dollar profit? Like, if you take out a hundred, I'm just like, how okay, would you? So, do that? so, okay, let me give you an example here. <clears throat> so, let's look at this actual portfolio uh, right here. So, for example, in Halliburton, I have two hundred fifty six shares. So, when oil prices recover, you know, let's say oil prices go back to their normal uh, $60, $70 range. This profit would be around uh, probably $12,000 for on this 256 shares that I have. So at that point, I would want to take my actual money out that I have paid right now. So let's say if it was, what was it? Let's see. So if you look at uh, the three month chart, Halliburton usually is a $22, $23 stock, right? I have right now I have paid about $2,000, actually $1,785. Let's say Halliburton goes Go, let's say it does not go back to $22, but it starts to go up and goes to $16 a share, right? So if it is $16 a share, I own 256 shares, my money would be at that point $4,096. At that point, I would want to take out my $1,785. That was my original money. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Right? So I would take out 1785 that was my original money but i will still leave that 2300 dollars oh, in the, in the okay. stock so now i'm only playing with my profits i've taken out my uh capital okay but i have to wait until it? this goes back to at least 20 uh, at least uh 16 dollars so because that's 20 dollars 21 dollars is the is the normal price for Halliburton. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't have to wait until it reaches 21, 22. So I am, I'm, I've, I've taken my capital out, but I'm still invested. So I'm still making money, but it's just that I'm not, I'm not playing with my capital. So if Does the that money goes out card? in the future, you know, at least it would be just the profit part. Uh, go ahead. Did you ask a question? Uh, I said, so when you make a profit on a stock, does it go into your credit card? Uh, it does not go into your credit card. So, so let's say if you're, there's no credit card here. So this is your account where you have your money. Um, so you click here on account. So for example, this account has about $19,000 and as you click on account. So right now, I have $15,000 in shares. I have $425 in cryptocurrencies and I have about $3,000 worth of cash. So okay. when I sell, when I sell a stock, that stock money goes into my cash wallet. Now I can cash this. I can transfer this money. By the way, I have not still not figured out how to transfer. Has somebody else figured out? So, so just like, you know, this is, this is my actual banking account. Mm -hmm. So just like I deposit funds from my, uh, from my account, I can uh, withdraw money from this and put it back in my bank account. Okay. So you will be able to spend the money like on whatever. Right, right. So, so, but you have to put it back. You have to tell them that I want to transfer, you know, 2000, $3,000 back into my, uh, my bank account. Okay. So, so right now I'm bringing money in from my bank account into Robinhood. Okay. 
but I can do the reverse process. I can put money uh, from Robinhood back into my bank account. So that's how this will work. So, so that's, that's how, you know, we should be looking at it. So potentially, potentially, you know, this, this just this Halliburton uh, stock, you know, if it goes back to its normal pre uh, COVID-19 levels, this money could potentially be tripled, mm -hmm. right? So my average cost was 698. So I'm already making money uh, on those 256 stocks that I own. I have a question. So yeah. you know how like the milk companies are down right now because uh, like, well, schools were buying a lot of their milk and stuff. Right. So do you think when they start announcing when they expect schools to possibly go back, like for students to go back to school, that would be smart to invest in them? Because then they okay. the money would start going up again. So milk, uh, I sent an article the other day, milk is like oil, right? Mm -hmm. That you have limited storage space. Once milk is milked, there is only a short lifespan of that milk before it goes bad. And then you may have to, you know, you may be in reverse uh, pricing, negative pricing at that point that you have to pay somebody to come in and pick up your spoiled milk. So, so what are farmers doing right now? They can either let the price crash by overflowing the market with milk that they can't sell and that would cause the milk price to crash or they can just spoil the milk themselves as they are milking. This is exactly what's happening right now. It's very heart-wrenching to see these farmers having to, having to put you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons of good milk, good fresh milk down the drain, literally, you know, they're actually putting it in the drainage yeah. because if they if they don't put it in the drainage and if they put it in the market it's going to crash the price of milk which is not good for any farmer so they would rather take their losses up front rather than flood the market so that's what they're doing oil cannot oil companies cannot do that they cannot put their oil in down the drainage, which is exactly what they are willing to do right now. If they had a way with it, they would, uh, wow. they would, you know, put it in the drain, but they can't. That's why there's an actual negative price with oil because oil is more, you know, toxic and uh, it would not decompose uh, in the drain. So, so, so what's happening with milk companies is, that they are holding their price, they are maintaining their uh, price point by spoiling the milk beforehand, by not overflowing the market with that milk. Okay. Right, so, so I think they'll still be pretty okay. You know, once the market stabilizes, once the consumption goes up, demand goes up, uh, there is already, um, already, um, uh, supply of milk, um, you know, and again, you know, you cannot shut off supply of that milk, you know, you cannot ask <laughs> how not to, not to produce milk anymore, you know, uh, at a short notice. Yeah. Could you, uh, could they make ice cream? Like, can, can they sell it to ice cream makers? Sure. How Did much ice cream that? are you going to sell, you know? Yeah, because I know I buy a lot of ice cream right now, so. Yeah, but how much ice cream are you going to sell and how much ice cream can you store? Do you have enough uh, freezer space? Oh yeah. That's a good right. Question. So, so that's, that's the problem. So, um, so anyway, so, yeah. okay. Let me ask you another question. So the prices went in negative the other day. And even right now the prices are quite low. Why do we not see that impact on the gas station? Why do gas stations still are selling at, you know, 180 uh, a gallon? 
Well, that is lower than normal, though. So. Yeah, but it was the same price when oil was trading at $29 a barrel. That's, oh. when, that's when the gas prices came down to 180 a gallon on the gas oh. station. Is, is it, it because, because they, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, um, I was just, I was gonna say, is it because they have like a monopoly thing, right? Like don't all the companies agree to some price? Um, well, if all companies agreed to some price, all gas station would have the same price, but that's not. Oh, oh that's not or like price. a range, like they're pretty close, right? Yeah, they're pretty close to each other in pricing, but there is some price difference. And of course they use that price difference uh, to increase their sales. Uh, individually, as individually. So, is it because the, um, the demand and usage is down? So it's driving the prices down because they're not able to um, sell it at the volume that they was because the prices are indicated by the market? Well, if you look at the basic theory of economics, when the demand goes down, the price should go down, which it did right. to some extent, but then it stagnated. So now the likelihood that you're going to see, uh, so, so there is a lot of room for the price to go down, but, but you're probably not going to see it. You know, I do not expect that, that you'll see 50, 50 cents a gallon, um, you know, at any point in the, in the future. The reason is, there is still cost associated with transportation. There is still cost associated with uh, running uh, a retail shop uh, gas station, basically. Uh -huh. and, and while there is a room for gas stations to reduce the price, because they're buying gas very cheap right now, but they're still maintaining that higher price margin to make up for the difference in their in their regular uh, regular profits, so so the expectation is that they will probably try to hold out that price for as long as they can, uh, because they can control their storage. They they don't have to buy it from the supplier, right? So if if they don't have the space in their underground tanks. Uh, where they store oil before it's uh, gas that before it's sold. So they're probably going to keep the price up and and keep the difference uh, to support themselves. You know, in these hard times. So, like you said, uh, that the sales volume is not enough. So they have to they have to have a larger margin for themselves to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there are some gas stations that are selling it actually below one dollar right now, uh, especially in Oklahoma and, and those types of places. You know, you might have seen those news. If you haven't, you probably will. Um, you know, eighty-nine cents a gallon, seventy-nine cents. Yeah, I saw seventy-nine cents a gallon the other day uh, on news. Wow. But they're not close to us. You know, a lot of also remember every time you buy a gallon of gas you're not just paying for the price of gas. There are a lot of government taxes. So uh, each gallon of uh, gas may have like 55 cents. So right, like right now in Delaware, there's 55 cents per gallon. Uh, that, is, uh, that is basically tax that goes to the government uh, to maintain roads and you know, infrastructure. Uh, so all of us pay that tax every time we purchase a gallon of gas at the gas station. Okay, so it's 10.15 already. Um, let's call it a day, we'll meet tomorrow. And then next week we will, starting next week, we'll only meet every Tuesday and Thursday morning. And like I said, I would like every one of you to go through, um, uh, the you know summary of uh, of of last night and pre uh, market hours, um, so everybody has uh, an experience in that. And also, um, starting tomorrow, I would like you to share your uh, Think or Swim software and show me exactly what you have done. If you have been investing, if you have made any money, 
uh, I am not investing much in this because I'm spending time with, with more money, but uh, you see that I, I've got 101,000. So I made $1,129 in those few hours when I was showing you this software uh, using the paper money. Um, so this is a good time to make investments, use your paper money, your, your $100,000 for net liquidity and day trades. And uh, you know, show us if you're making money, if you're losing money, if you're making money, why do you think you're making money? How did you choose those stocks? Uh, how did you decide when to buy, when to sell particular stocks? You know, uh, share those insights with us. Whatever I had to teach, I have already taught you. So right now it's all about conversation. It's all about learning from each other. So while I'll continue to share my insights, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will, you, by this time, you would also have started to develop your own insights. Uh, and this is an industry, this is a sector where everybody's um, uh, insights are important. I wanted to share something. Sure. Uh, David Adepeso, um, who is Tamar Braxton's um, boyfriend, he had a class the other day on two days ago <clears throat> and it was, and he is a, I don't know, multimillionaire, billionaire, I'm not sure. Um, but his, his portfolio is up there. And so he just deals, he's a Harvard graduate um, and he deals in finance and he had a class the other day um, and I took extensive notes. Um, it was Let's Talk Money, Dem Demystifying Wealth with David Edefeso. Ever wonder how the truly wealthy make and keep their wealth. It's no secret, just basic principles that they adhere to. Mm -hmm. um, they'll talk, so they, he talked about taxes, the silent wealth killer, why we pay so much and ways and techniques you can use to legally reduce your, your taxes. Um, so if you want the notes, um, let me know. Uh, some of five things he talked about, which uh, on how to save money on taxes, if you don't own a business um, and you're just an employee, uh, you should go to your 401k um, and out and don't give the government uh, a loan free for, for your taxes. So what he's saying pretty much is that you are giving the government a tax-free loan that you get back at the end of the year. If you took home all of that money and invested it in something else that's going to make you money you would have more than let's say that three thousand dollars that you depend on so much um for business owners he talked about a defined benefit pension plan um the third thing was investing in real estate uh investing in personal real estate don't count on your tax refund turn ordinary income into investment income start and incorporate a business so if you want the, the uh the notes, you just let me know. I looked for the video, but it doesn't look like he posted it uh, or that it's even available anymore, but I took extensive notes. Okay, so um, feel free to share those notes uh, on the class group, group that we have, right? So uh, I've got plenty to say about every single one of those things that, that you have just mentioned. Okay. Uh, and the reason I don't talk about those things uh, is because there are caveats with every single one of them. So for example, you know, why give the government a free loan by, when you pay, when you overpay taxes and then you claim your tax return at the end of the year? You're right, but everybody's situation is different. Uh, for some people who are, uh, whose tax liability may be in the millions it may make sense for them not to pay that in advance and only calculate their liabilities at the end of the year. Uh, but people, I, I deal with a lot of people who are low income families. For them, that extra money at the end of the year is, is, a, is, a, is like a huge windfall for them that they can use to actually do some things in their life that otherwise they would not be able to, for example, they can buy a car with that money, which they would not be able to if they, if they had continued to take all the money out and not paid, overpaid in taxes. So there would not be any more money coming. So for them, it does not make sense for them to take everything out, 
upfront because it'll be small amount of money, which they would not be able to do anything with. So, so no, he's not saying not to do anything with it. He's saying take that money, all of that money that you would put away every single, or that they would take out automatically and invest it or put it in something that you're going to gain money. So that by the end of the year, I mean, even if it's a mutual fund, whatever, at the end of the year, you'll have more than that. It'll be, and, and you'll have with interest. Does that make sense? Right. Are you still saying don't do it? Right. Basically, everybody's situation is different. Right. Okay. If everybody had a Navid who was teaching them how to invest in, you know, and have confidence, <laughs> it would make sense. Got but it. the fact is, people don't even know how to do their taxes. They need, you know, companies and accountants to do their taxes, you know, poor people, people who don't have a lot of money. So mm -hmm. how do you expect them to, to invest money? Where are they going to invest? You know, they're not going to even know, you know, how to, how to do a, a normal trade unless somebody teaches them. So before, before you ask them not to pay, overpay the government in taxes, I would teach them first what to do with that extra money. If you know what to do with that extra money, then okay, then, then don't overpay. Then just pay what you are required to pay and not a penny more. But if you don't know what to do with that money, it is probably a good thing it is like a savings account. You're putting that money away. And at the end of the year, you get something, you know, substantial amount of money back that you can use to, to do something with. So um, can, can, that's, what, uh, that's all I'm saying, that there are caveats. Okay. Um, when I, uh, my husband was the one that signed up for the class. So he was like getting the email. So um, I did request the emails. I got one, but how do you access the recordings for our classes, I saw two were on um, two were online on the YouTube from the one link that um, that she sent me. But how do I access the classes? Okay, so you are you are able to access those two videos only because those are the only two videos that I did upload. I have not uploaded other videos. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So my purpose is to have this more one-on-one -on -one interaction. I don't so so you know, the first two classes, it was me talking more and you listening, right? So that's why I put it up there. Now you can see the dynamics have changed. You know, I want to have a two-way communication. And this is the only way to actually learn and absorb that we have this conversation over and over, over and over again. You know, it's the same concept, same things, but you talk, I talk, all of us talk, and we reinforce those, reinforce those concepts by practice, by actually doing it. So yeah, that's I, I just, going forward. I just, yeah, going, yeah, going forward. So that's why I've not, I've not put in a, in a specific end date for when we are going to shut down this class. Right. Yeah, it, so it I'm, I'm saying that we'll continue Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is because I want you to be able to talk you that you have some time like office hours of sorts that you can come in, you can share your screen um, and we can talk about it. Uh, so this is a, this is a lifelong learning. Uh, it's not just, you know, one semester and then you're done. Yeah. The issue was for me, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to, um, so I set up my thinkorswim account on Friday. And so I didn't figure out how to make the buy and sell. So I didn't want to have to like bother you on how to, um, you know, on how to just do the basic part of that. So I was trying to figure out if I could go back to the classes and figure that out so that I could start doing the trading. But that's the only thing like I cannot figure, I, I, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't remember how you said to actually physically buy and sell and then going through like that part. That was my only thing was just that, that thing. Sure. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you still need the, uh, um, the recordings of the class, I can probably upload them. Um, but sometimes, you know, I, I talk about, uh, uh, sometimes I show screens that I wouldn't want the whole world to see. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. I, what yeah. I'll do is I'll just reach out. I can just, uh, I can, yeah. I'll figure it out. I no, think I can no. Google it, right? Like how to buy on things. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So you have the confidence now, right? So you have the yes, confidence. Yes, I have the confidence. I just need to figure out where do you click to done, buy. Yeah. If you're looking for specific steps, you know, where to click, there's tons of, uh, you know, how to's on this. Okay. Yep. No problem. You don't have to upload it then. That's what I figured. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. Well, 
Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you joining in today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay. So Erica, would you like to volunteer for tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to try to buy, I'm going to try to buy something. I'm going to buy some stuff today. I'm going to buy it, right? I'm going to go on there and I'm going to look now and then yes, I will. Uh, okay. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about doing the market review, uh, the after hours and pre-market. Oh, snap. Okay. Listen, yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay, so, let's so those, those are the, those are the websites that somebody put in the, in the chat, right? It was the, um, the email is, is going through looking at the, um, FinWiz, Open Insider, mm -hmm. and what else ones we look at? We look at the market. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to upload uh, today's recording. So look at the first half hour or first 20 minutes when Asaki was talking. So, mm -hmm. you know, what she was talking about, just basically use it as a template, uh, okay. for your conversation. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So the links are also in the first email he sent. Yes. At the um, bottom. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Maya. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right.